it's time to talk trim. Now, we're here at um, M and K's today, Mark and Karen, drinking some of their lovely coffee. So to discuss trim and how we arrived at, at this situation today. So before we even got down to Mark and Karen's today, we've spent a long time going through the research for the car. Everything we do, I mean, Mark has done all our concourse cars for the last 10 years, so all the awards that we've won over the years, no, they, do, they do a fabulous job for us, so they're doing the 308. There's, there's trim and there's trim. What we don't want, um, you've seen it before, that sometimes it's, either, it's a bit like the rest of the cars, it's either right or it's not, and if you open the door and sort of go, oh, oh dear, this makes or breaks the project, so we've got to get this right. So this is why they do all our work for us. So the choices, we've got the original build sheet for the car, um, which has got the original Vomil leather code on it. We all know that we've gone blue on the outside, so it was, it was time to choose which colour we're going to go on the inside. We've already been down to Connolly Leather, and we spent the morning down there going through all the archive and all the, all the swatches. We had all the hides out. It was a sort of family decision of, of what we went through. We've gone through all, all, the, all the different options. I say Connolly have been doing leather for forever no for for everybody for all of aston martins and rolls royces ferraris they are the leather people so that's why we use it so we've got the options here of which way do we go with the blues the greens the the lights the darks um and eventually we've ended up on tan so decision made vomal tan leather the other decision we had to make was, and I was on, I'll be honest, I was on the fence on this, is all the interior of the car on the black was originally vinyl. These were, the 308s were quite sort of volume related on, on, the, on the sort of factory. They didn't do, the, the only bits that were leather were the door cards and the seats. The, the rest of it was all plastic. Now it's very tempted to go leather. And I was very nearly there to go leather dashboard, leather armrest, leather console, but I thought, no, we've got to keep it original. So back down to Mark's again, see what we've got on the vinyl. We've gone through all the different types of vinyl. We ended up peeling back the old dashboard, looking on the back and, and finding a piece of vinyl that was tucked away underneath the dashboard that hadn't been bleached by the sun, hadn't been got at for the last 30 odd years, and eventually matching it exactly to what we've got on it today. So this is the sort of research and this is the effort that goes on behind the scenes before we even buy any products. So now we've got exactly the right, right, right vinyl for the, the dashboard and the console and what have you. The other thing that came up was stitching. Now stitching, that looks very white. A lot of them look like they're done in black, but in reality, they've either been retrimmed or 30 year old white stitching then goes black. Some people say they're creamy, but again, that's just faded white. So when we actually went through and peeled back the old underneath that hadn't been bleached, they were actually originally white. So that's why it's got white stitching on it. Carpet wise, again, we went around the houses on colors and we've settled on a, on a navy blue carpet. So that was the three colors that we're introducing into the car, black dashboards, tan leather, blue carpet. Okay, so here we are upstairs where all the magic happens. So, and I must say, being, being down at Connolly's the other day, I learned a lot about leather. The, we've got the hides, so you've, we've chosen the hides, which are surprisingly big. Um, so the next bit is to pattern the hides. So there, Steve and, and Mark have got all the patterns for all the, all the 308 stuff. So it's now laying the patterns out for all the different sections, making sure that you get the consistent grain going the right way. There's no blemishes in the leather because every, because obviously these are no animal hides, so there is there's blemishes of bits and pieces on them. So to try and get a nice consistent bit of the, of the part you're gonna see. So that's the first area. The other thing um, that Mark's done on this is, you can see these are, these are quite thick. Um, original hides, original leather, they, they're quite thick. So some of the areas that we need to do, they need to, trying to, to work with this, you end up with too much product. So certain little bits, they get thinned down. So this is the roll that's come back. So they've sent some of the hides away to be thinned down. So this has now been basically scraped. It's the same hide, so they've scraped it off the back to make it a much thinner leather. So when it comes to some of the more delicate bits, you haven't got so much product to work with. So that's already been done, ready for the smaller areas. So once the patterning has been done, I mean, they've cut out the sections, because once you break down the seat, it's, it's basically all individual pieces. Um, so you've got your patterns. 
So this one's actually is happening. Now we're here today as, as Steve's actually doing this with Mark, that you've got three components. You've got the metal frame of the seat, then you've got the foam, which in this case has been in really good condition. Then obviously this is gonna be one piece to go round the cheek and then another piece to go up the middle. And then obviously you've got the, the original black. This is completely original that we've kept the same design of the black fillets going. But again, it, it's how all this is done. And this is the difference. That, this is what makes the difference between trimmers and really good trimmers. And if you wanna get it right, this is where the detail really happens. So tucking it all in, getting all the creases out. So this one's literally as it's being done today. But I must say, I'm really pleased with the color. This is gonna look really good. So the other bit that obviously gets colored inside the car is, is the door card. So this is the original, original color. You can see it's old. You can see where it's faded, where no one's got to it before. So we're redoing all of that in the new color. So we've, the, the new armrests will sit on there like that. Um, we use the original grills and everything will go in. We'll, we'll take out the original uh, button there for the emergency handle for the window winders and also the piping. These were originally, they had a little bit of piping around the edge so all that's been done completely as it was originally. So no, really pleased with this. All the sort of 80s, 70s and 80s series, going back to Dino's, we've all got these fiberglass floors. And when you lift the whole lot out, it is a nightmare to get back in. Um, the stuff's all sort of 30 or 40 years old. You have to be quite brutal to get it all out. So you've got a, a steel chassis here and a fiberglass floor here. And it's literally just riveted around the bottom with seam sealer and, and uh, hundreds of pot rivets. So you drill them all out. You have to sort of leave them out so they usually sort of crack and break a bit. But it goes right down to the front of the bulkhead, all the way up the side here, to the other side of the wheel arch, is under the dashboard. So if you're gonna do any chassis work, you've got to get all this lot out. And it goes right up the back and up the bulkhead. So there's lots of it and it takes hours, I must say. <laughs> Um, putting this lot back in has taken a long time and it always does when we do them in the body shop. So not only have you got to, we've sent these off to be media blasted, so to get all the old gunge and underneath it be under seal and so when you get, eventually cut them all out there's all old seam sealer and stuff like that all over it. So just to get them back into a state where you can get them back into the car, then you get back in and there's usually some gaps. So you, you mix them, more fiberglass matting up and you end up sort of matting them back in, repairing cracks and holes and what have you. Eventually you get them back in and then we run around with a load of seam sealer all the way around the, the edges to obviously sort of make them sort of watertight and, and stop anything coming in. But it is a colossal job. Whenever we've done a restoration, if you can leave the fiberglass in, it almost like halves the body shop time to get this lot out and prepared and back in again. <laughs> Not only does it hurt your hand with the amount of pot roots you do, but it is a right faff, but it's worth doing well. So this one's all back in now, got it back in. So we now start to lay the carpet up under, under here and behind the panels. So we'll do the carpet up here first, because once you've got the pedal box, and steering column and all that sort of stuff in here. It's a real pain to get down to the bulkhead to do the carpet. So we're gonna put the carpet down there first, then lay the wiring looms in, then put all the pedal boxes and that in. So it makes it life a little bit more tolerable to get behind it all. One of the com most common problems on 308s, and a lot of clients have experienced this, is the windows that go up and down slowly. So while we've got this door all stripped out, I thought I'd show you how it all works. Um, what we've got is a motor up here and it, it, it's wound around all these cables. You can see all these cables and it goes, it does, it goes all, all around the door in this very complicated run of cables. And two of them bolt, two of these cables here and here bolt to the verticals which lift. So as the motor rotates, it raises and lowers the windows. Um, not many other people chose to use this system because it wasn't the best one in the, in the world to start with. Most people have just got a regulator, which works a lot better. Now, one of the, there's two, re, two main reasons why the windows, because these get really slow and you almost put your finger on the button and then you've got your hand either side of the glass and sort of helping it up, which is what most customers do. Some, there's a, one theory is that the volt drop between the fuse box and where the wires come through the door, that being Italian electrics is a massive volt drop. So the motors, poor old motors not getting 12 volts to work with. So that's why it's so slow. The other one, which I'll show you why we've got a part is the, all these white pulleys and the, the motor, the grease goes hard and the mechanisms, mechanism is all stiff before you even start. So even if it is only getting 12 volts or 11 volts, if the 
all the mechanisms full of goo, then he's got no chance anyway. So I've got a motor apart, so let's show you inside. So here's the motor out of the car. So basically we've got our two wires that feed the motor, um, which is just a normal motor which rotates left and right, depending on which way the polarity is. And then you've got this great big cable that I've just shown that goes around that spool in there, it does get a bit tangled up sometimes and goes all around the door. So you have to get them rolled on that spool, absolutely spot on, otherwise they tend to get all tied up. But in here, if you take that cover off, this is the drive. So when that goes round, it turns this wheel, which turns the spool, which turns the cable. And what happens is, this is original grease, this has been in there, you can see that that is like toffee. There's another load here. So all that, basically that drip, that grease around here, that's like, you can't even scrape it off. It's, it's like glue. So the poor old motor's trying to go round and rotate this wheel whilst covered in toffee. So that's one of the biggest problems. So by scraping all this, I mean, that is <laughs> it's taking some getting off. Get rid of all the toffee, put some new grease in it, re-grease all the motor, re-grease all the gear that goes around the top, and the chances are your motor's probably gonna be all right. We've now got the finished articles back, and I must say, they look absolutely fabulous. Um, as we said before, it's all in the detail, and little things that, no, I look for in these. Yes, we've got these in vinyl, but you can see underneath here, he's put some nice soft sort of fluff underneath. Just, just those little bits of detail. So when you put your, your hand up under there to feel the door opener, there's a little bit of soft stuff. We were talking about these, oh, these little pieces, looks like a fairly sort of small piece that just sticks up under there. But this is done in the thinner leather. We, we spoke about the leather being scraped off to make it thinner to work with. And it's, it's the detail to just make these little tiny pieces work. So it's, it's all, you know, little piece like that is, is significant. It's got to be done right. When I look at these, I mean, I'll just lift this off. The, the detail here, the, the, getting the piping right, getting, getting the piping so it, it sticks. There's nothing worse than piping that's all sort of, no, not stuck on properly or, or wobbling around. The little button here, now that, that may just be a little button, but again, that's been done with the thin leather so it can stretch round and fit on beautifully. On the GTSs, um, you didn't have a glove box on the 308, so what they used to give you was a, a little door pocket with a little key to lock, the, to, to, to lock the door pocket. But again, inside here, inside this little door pocket, it's all been felted inside. So we've got soft sort of velvet felt inside here. We've kept the original speaker grill. You can see on the back, it's got like a very fine, just sort of gauze that goes across the back. And then that's just gonna sit in there, just recessed. So what the guys have done, have just recessed this back a bit, there's a little, little recess there, and that'll just sit perfectly just inside there, just as it did originally. So another area that you some, can sometimes find the numbers when you're going around these cars is the backs of door cards and backs of trims. And one of the things we found on this, on the backs of the door cards, there's the sticker 136, so that's our body number, and there's a little part number there. We know this, is, this was um, built in 1979, this car, so this was done somewhere sort of 78, 79. So that's been a reasonable bit of tape, been there all this time. And if you look on the other door, there's the other bit of tape, and you can tell it's the same handwriting. So whoever the trimmer was down at the factory back in the 70s, these bits of tape have been there ever since. So it's really nice to find this sort of detail. So now we come on to the main event, obviously, the seats. I mean... I'm really, really pleased with these. I, I don't know how these guys do it. Whilst we've been doing this car, I've done some of the sort of smaller, small panels and pieces, you no, know, trying to trim something like that. And it's surprising how hard it is just to do little bits of vinyl and little bits and pieces that I've done around the car. How on earth they do this, I don't know. So they've got the, the lines here. It's getting the, the, the fillet lines and the perfect. There's nothing worse than seeing the no, one line's coming down here and then being offset. The other thing is how our Mark and Steve have, have done the, the leather. They've tucked it down the side. Got it absolutely perfect down there. And another issue is the, the rise here on the 308s. It wants to be slightly recessed, not too much, not too deep. I've seen them with the black stripes just literally stuck on top of the leather, which looks wrong. 
or if they're recessed too much, it looks wrong. So these are absolutely perfect as original. So really, really pleased with these. And the color's gonna look, you can start to see the color coming out now. Really pleased that we chose this color, that it's a nice period color that's gonna match the blue beautifully. So we managed to get the rear parcel shelf in. One of the tricky bits to do was to get this rear panel in and get the rear glass in. Um, and then anyone who's fitted curved glass on 308s and Dinos knows what a challenge they are. You almost have to sort of bend the glass into, into shape, but you've also got to get it tucked just right around this trim here that sits under the rubber. So whilst, whilst you're pulling in the rubber, you don't want to pull out the trim. So that's a real, that was a, <laughs> a good few hours of, of working to get that in, but really pleased with that. So that's gone in. Carpet is starting to take shape now. We've got the carpet on the bulkhead, starts to build up some of these side panels. Um, console starting to go in, that's really starting to take shape. But as you can see, there's an awful lot of wiring, all of this lot that's got to fit inside. So we're, we're doing the wiring loom as well, going through all the switches, sorting the wiring loom out. So there's, it's not just putting the trim in, it's doing all the associated parts that are underneath it. Um, seat runners have started to take shape, so we're putting those in, getting those to work. Um, and little things like seat runners, there's nothing worse than sitting in a classic car and the seat doesn't move. So we've, we've overhauled all of those, lubricated all the little, they've got little ball bearings and everything in them and done all that. So we're really sort of, Everything that goes in this car has got to be on there perfectly. But it is coming along and, the, and I love the colours. The colours are really starting to take shape now. As we said in the original video, the different, the, the vinyl with the carpet and the leather, it's going to look spectacular.